Hey everybody, I'm Ryan. I'm Dawn, and today we're going to be giving you a review of the quick start of Familiars of Terra. First off, I think it's fair to let you know that Angry Hamster Publishing reached out to us and asked if we wanted to take a look at it in order to give the review. So we did get the quick start rules for free. It doesn't really influence the way that we review anything, but figured it's good to let you know that up front. So this is a, a system to role play in, as well as a bit of a world. And when I was looking at the artwork and reading through, it reminds me a lot of the romantic fantasy books. Uh, things like Robin McKinley, Mercedes Lackey, those kinds of books. Um, so if you're a fan of like Blue Rose, this might be a nice alternative system to look at. The artwork and the idea and the overall concept, as well as the world that's presented, I really like. And so I wish I liked the game more, or at least what was presented to us. It's supposed to be a modern world setting, if not a little bit futuristic. And the idea is that they're the great superpowers kind of all blew themselves up. And so it's kind of the modern world, not really post-apocalyptic grimdark by any means, but I kind of think of it as a, a more idyllic type system. Um, Honestly, the kind of images in my head as I read through the quick start were things from like Studio Ghibli, that style of am animation, and I really dig that. Mm -hmm. A major premise of the system is that you not only create the character that you're going to play, but you also create this familiar. They say uh, to add kin to the end of any animal name uh, to indicate that it's a familiar, and it has special abilities. Uh, so there was like a lizard kin that could climb up on walls. I know there was a dog kin that had the ability to cure poison and a couple of other things just from petting its fur. And that was really kind of fun and cute and a little different. And they're not familiars the way that you might see in Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons or uh, one of the tabletop games like that. Um, you don't just summon them up. It really kind of is this idea that your familiar, the animal kin, is another part of your spirit. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, the books like The Golden Compass, it reminds me a lot about that, where your soul or a part of your soul inhabits the animal familiar and you're intrinsically tied together. And the lizard kin doesn't just look like a lizard. It's a lizard, but it has wings and can walk on two legs. Or the cat kin, I know, can fly and change colors. They are, there are normal animals in this world. The animal kin, the familiars, are very special and very unique. From reading through the quick start, this does seem to be a system that lends itself to a little bit more of the role-playing aspect of role-playing games, as well as kind of social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, seems to be a little less combat heavy, and it's not super crunchy. So if you want something that's going to have a lot of different options and different mechanics, this isn't the system that you probably are going to want to play in. One of the interesting mechanics that it does have is it uses a deck of cards to resolve conflict, social conflict or combat or whatever you have there. Ace being the lowest number possible for one and king being the highest. And you sort of hold them in your hand and you play them. And so there's a little bit of strategy there, less random than dice or something like that. It seems interesting. Um, just based off of the quick start rules, I'm not sure how well it works. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll be interested in seeing what, you know, those of you that have played the quick start or have backed it or start to play it once it comes out, what you think. I think it's a really cool idea. I've seen that sort of system used in some other games um, and even in video games. And when it works well, it works well. But for me, uh, it kind of takes me out of the um, out of the role play moment. And in a system that seems to focus much more on role play, uh, I don't I don't know how well that's going to work. Social interactions or doing kind of ability checks, you want to draw lower than your score. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that makes it easy to tell, like, oh, as you level up your score gets higher, so it gets easier to do those things. But in combat, you want the higher card. Another sort of interesting thing about it is that combat is only done between familiars. 
So your characters aren't really fighting each other. It's just their animal companions, their familiars that fight back and forth. And so that's probably something to keep in mind as you generate for character creation when you create your character. Um, or if you get the quick start rules, um, picking a familiar that is pre-generated that's more lent towards combat if that's what you want to do. It's not exactly clear in the quick start how exactly this happened, but you gain XP through role-playing your calling and promise. So calling is what kind of is the reason that you become an explorer, is the reason that you're you're going out on these adventures, and then promise is has something to do with a personality trait. So it reminds me a little bit of the milestone system, I guess, in some other um, in some other systems. It's, as you accomplish certain things, you go ahead and level up. Um, and you can increase your scores and your abilities there. One mechanic that I really like out of the game, though, is the concept of your stash. I think this might be one of my favorite things um, in this system. Uh, and I know some other systems that have done similar things. The idea is that as you go through, as you adventure, as you collect treasure and gold and all that kind of stuff, you don't really keep tally of every in individual copper piece. The idea is that you you hoard, you build a stash of treasure. And then in the downtime, that's how you buy things. That's how you up, uh, upgrade your equipment or buy new stuff or make things better for you and your familiar at home or in your keep. I'm assuming that that's a, a possibility in the full version. I think that that's a really neat sort of thing. It's a little bit less inventory management, the game, mm -hmm. um, as far as your treasure goes. And I think that that gets back to sort of the roots of some dungeon crawly style adventures where it's, you're just, you're trying to build up your treasure and you want to make your castle and your keep better and you want to get nicer stuff. And that's why you've gone out into the world in order to uh, to become an adventurer. Because the world that they set up in this game, um, things are pretty okay. Uh, it, it's, it's not crazy monsters everywhere post-apocalyptic. You're not fighting for survival. It's that you and your familiar have um, felt a calling to go out into the world, and not everyone feels that calling. Another interesting uh, mechanic in the game are titles and trophies. So titles are titles that your character gains uh, when they complete certain things or because they've done something and they've been awarded this title. And with the title, you get kind of special abilities, stuff like that, um, with the idea of like, oh, you completed this quest, now you know this, and you have this title. And then trophies are special items that you might pick up along the way or be able to discover, kind of find some treasure chests and have a trophy from an exploration that will be useful item or whatever it is, it's something that is special. It's not just something you could buy with your stash. And the trophies aren't just a plus one broadsword. They are specific and unique items that have quirks and personalities of themselves. They can also be used as a story hook or an adventure seed uh, for the GM to use. The art style that I've seen so far is pretty unique. I like it. There's definitely a distinctive style that's to it. It's kind of Lisa Frank-y to me. I mean, the colors aren't quite that no. bold, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's something about this reading through it that I think I do like that it makes me feel like when I was in middle school reading through some of the books again, everything from the art style to the focus on collaborative storytelling, that kind of makes me feel like I used to. There's a little bit of nostalgia there that it's mm -hmm. tapping into when I first started getting into RPGs. And so um, that's a neat thing to capture. I really hope that it captures that and continues to keep it um, as you play. Uh, I think that that'd be something really good for it to do. Yeah, and reading through, to to me, it also had that age range as this would be a great system to use to introduce to younger players mm -hmm. um, who are interested in getting into it, especially younger players that don't 
aren't wanting to do dungeon crawls or, yeah. be, or, or all of that, but really enjoy the role play aspect um, and the artwork and the wording, it, it reminds me a lot of a lot of YA books. Yeah, I think overall, if you've got younger players or players that are new to tabletop, which is, is fantastic, or players that aren't interested in lots of charts and numbers and dice, then Familiars of Terra might be a really nice way to go. Collaborative storytelling. There's a mechanical system here and the book itself sets things up that it's a, not a focus on combat. So I think that that might really appeal to a lot of folks that a more traditional hack and slash sword and sorcery um, RPG isn't really their thing, you know? So, I mean, and that's great. Anytime we can find more things for everybody in our community, I say that that's a win. Going through the book and looking at everything, uh, it's an interesting world, it's a fun concept, but it's not really the style of gameplay that I'm as interested in, or um, at least not what's here and now in the quick start rules. Uh, and now if a buddy of mine had it and they wanted to play a few sessions, I'd absolutely be in. Yeah. The whole idea of dual character creation with the fami familiar sounds really cool to me, but I don't know that I'm gonna be rushing out to get the first printing of the hardcover. If it does sound like something that you're interested in, they are doing a Kickstarter right now for the full rule set. Uh, so we'll put a link down to that in the video description if you wanna go check it out and back it and see mm -hmm. kind of what all of the different levels that they have unlocked. And if you've gotten the quick start rules, if you know a little bit more about the game, or if you do decide to back it, let us know why. Let us know what appeals to you. We really like reading all the stuff that you folks have to say. That's a really cool part of all of this. Want to give a special thanks to all of our patrons, especially Sean, Arvi, Lainey, and Joan. Uh, if you're interested in becoming one of our patrons, uh, checking out some of our cool perks and joining us on our campaign, you can go to patreon.com slash roll for initiative. Thanks to everybody that is a subscriber and that likes the videos. If you just, if this is your first one, then welcome. Um, please become a subscriber. That would be super awesome and leave us a comment and share it and like and all that fun stuff. You can hit the little bell icon if you would like to get notification every time that we upload a video or just join us back here every Tuesday and Thursday. That's when we put new videos up. Until next time, thanks for watching. Roll for initiative. Bye. Bye.